Hi, my name is Shay Truen, and I'm the Collections Leader at the Nelson Provincial Museum. One question we are frequently asked at the museum is how you can preserve your own objects at home. So we're here to help with that today. But before we go into too much detail, it's important to remember that not one solution will suit every object in your home. Plus, depending on the condition of your objects, some may need more intensive care than others. Have you noticed when you walk into a museum that it often feels cold? That's because we use temperature control as an essential tool to keep our objects well preserved. Organic materials break down when exposed to high temperatures. So keeping these items in a cool place in your house is essential. Keep them away from fireplaces, away from your heater, and definitely away from direct sunlight. So how do you know if your objects have been damaged by high temperatures? Well, one good clue is that they may have just started to become very fragile and weak. In textiles, you may see the threads start to lose their strength, particularly around the seams. In newspaper, you may see significant yellowing. In other paper, you may see desiccation. For anything made with a natural dye, you may see considerable fading. One of the biggest preservation challenges at the museum is preserving our nitrate film. This material we store in a cool store, which is 1.5 degrees centigrade. We also control the relative humidity to around 25 to 30 percent. Controlling relative humidity is also important for preservation, and in the next few slides we'll discuss why. Did you know that many objects can act like a sponge? They can absorb and release moisture from the air and undergo shape change. Sometimes they expand and sometimes they shrink. The types of objects that can undergo shape change include books and paintings, textiles and leather. These items should be kept in a stable environment where they won't experience extreme or constant fluctuations in relative humidity. Here is a more extreme example of what can happen when an item undergoes constant or extreme shape change. This nail has actually been pushed out of this artwork from the expansion and contraction of the wood underneath. As you can see, it's caused quite considerable damage to the artwork. High humidity also poses a risk to iron and to silver. Iron can rust and delaminate as shown in this picture of a cannonball. Silver can also tarnish, especially if silver is kept in an area where there might be pollutants in the air, like near a fireplace or in a kitchen. It's not always possible to control the humidity in a space, so you may want to consider packing away your objects, especially during extreme climate conditions, like in the winter or in the summer. You can wrap your items in some tissue or some Tyvek, you can put the item in a box and then you can put the box in the cupboard, essentially creating as many barriers as possible to any extreme or constant changes in humidity. Moving on to the topic of pests. Rats and mice like to find a nice warm place to nest for the winter, so it's really important that you keep your objects in a place that is inaccessible to them and that you monitor frequently. Insects can be just as destructive to your objects. Silverfish attack paper, they can create holes, but they can also deface a decorative surface like on a certificate or even a vintage poster. So you may want to consider storing your paper in a box, but make sure you monitor it frequently and definitely keep the area clean. Borer can be extremely destructive to wood. In the most extreme circumstances, the wood can turn spongy or it can crumble. Borer can be hard to spot, but look out for small pinhole entrances, small piles of dust, and maybe nearby insect activity from ants or spiders feasting on carcasses or live emerging borer. If you have an object that is infested with borer, wrap it and separate it from any other wooden items in your home. You can treat borer through freezing or with the application of pesticides, but seek professional advice before doing either. It's important to keep in mind that one piece of wood can have multiple generations of borer inside, so you may need to treat several times over several years. Cloth moths are secretive little creatures that like to find dark places to lay their eggs. 
The larvae can munch through natural fibres, including wool, fur, feathers and silk. They can cause considerable damage to your textiles, but also to your carpet. If you suspect an infestation, look for webbings or for casings. Look along seams, look inside folds and deep inside pockets. Remove any infected items and clean. You can also freeze them as a preventative measure, but seek advice before doing so. As for carpet, make sure you vacuum regularly, especially along the walls. Move your furniture, vacuum underneath it, and keep as much sunlight in the room as possible. Mold is not only a preservation hazard, but it's also a health hazard. If you have mold on your objects, please seek professional advice before you touch them. It is impossible to remove all the mold spores from your home. To protect your objects from a mold outbreak, make sure they stay clean and dust free. Store them in a room that is well insulated and avoid areas of high humidity. Make sure there's good airflow. If you do store your item in a sealed box, make sure you check it frequently. Finally, prevention is always better than cure. Keep an eye on your objects, take photographs of them. Make sure you document any pre-existing damage or if you notice any change. Consult with a conservator if you do notice an issue. They may be able to help and prevent the damage from getting worse. Thanks for watching. We hope this was useful and please get in contact with us if you have any questions.